Hello everyone, I hope you're doing well, and of course Arnie does too. Now for today's invasive species episode, we'll be heading to the beautiful country of New Zealand. Now New Zealand's been separated from the rest of the world for around 20 million years, and because of this it has a very fragile ecosystem, which is mainly dominated by large birds. And as there are only two native species of mammal on New Zealand, for a long time it's been a bird's paradise, as they could happily walk on the ground without any risk of predation. But unfortunately today this has all changed, as I will be going through five invasive species found in New Zealand. And our first species is native to nearby Australia, and it is the common brush-tail possum. Now this small mammal is a marsupial, and is most active at night. And although it looks quite innocent and cute, it does have a bit of a dark side, as it does feed on various forms of vegetation, such as leaves, fruits, and flowers. But it's also quite an efficient predator, feeding on insects, birds, and small mammals. Like many other intelligent mammals, the brush-tail possum also does very well in cities, and they're known to wander around at night, and even enter people's homes. These small marsupials were first introduced into New Zealand in 1837. They were transported here by settlers with the idea of farming them for their fur. But this first introduction was unsuccessful and they were reintroduced in 1858. And this introduction had disastrous consequences for the ecosystem, mainly due down to their adaptability and their adventurous diet. As brush-tailed possums spend a lot of their time in the treetops, where they freely feed on birds and their eggs. And as I've covered previously, New Zealand was once a safe haven for birds, as there are almost no natural predators. And as these birds have had nothing to fear, they were not well equipped to deal with a new predator in their ecosystem. But it wasn't just the birds that suffered, as these possums also fed on the native invertebrates and are known carriers of bovine tuberculosis. And as New Zealand has a large farming industry, it cost them around $35 million per year. And as there are no natural predators for the brush-tailed possum in New Zealand, they've been able to multiply at an astonishing rate, as in the early 2000s, total population estimates ranged from around 50 million to 70 million. And as there are only 4.9 million people in New Zealand today, this really is an astonishing number. And because of this growth and the damage that they cause, there are plenty of efforts to control their numbers, and hopefully the ecosystem will be able to bounce back. But our next species can be found pretty much anywhere, as we have the koi carp. Now koi carp have to be some of the most popular and sought after pond fish in the world. But when these fish are found outside of a pond, they can cause major problems to not only New Zealand, but many other ecosystems around the world. Organised koi breeding began in Japan in the early 19th century, and since then many strains have been created created, and high quality koi can sell for millions. And as koi can reach a maximum size of around a metre or 39 inches, they can really damage the health of New Zealand's rivers, as they get through a lot of food and create a lot of waste. It's thought that koi were accidentally imported into New Zealand in the 1960s, as the shipment was meant to be goldfish, but also contained some koi. And later on in 1983, the first wild koi were found in New Zealand's rivers. It's thought that they spread through illegal introduction, and also escaping during large floods. And New Zealand's freshwater ecosystems are quite unique as they're usually full of small native fish that aren't found anywhere else in the world. So a new alien invader would have almost nothing to fear in these waters. And koi are very similar to the common carp, and often cause the same problems, as they stir up the bottom of ponds and lakes, muddying the water and creating algal blooms. But koi are also opportunistic feeders, and will feed on the native invertebrates, small fish and fish eggs. But to help tackle this invasion, people are encouraged to bow hunt for this species, and luckily there is one predator that can take on a koi carp, and that is the long fin eel. And as this species can reach 1.5 meters long, they're more than able to take on your average sized koi. So hopefully with the help from these eels, the koi's numbers can be kept under control. And again, our next species can be found almost anywhere, as we have rats. Now there are three species of rats that can be found on New Zealand today. The Polynesian rat, the Norway rat, and the black rat. Rats are known for being almost bulletproof, and can survive in some of the worst conditions, as they're often seen springing out of sewers, and from alleyways in and around cities. And to be a small mammal living in a city, you have to be quite intelligent to avoid all the dangers and to find food. It's thought that these rats arrived in New Zealand with the European settlers in the mid to late 18th and 19th century. And if you were a wily rat arriving in New Zealand, you have an easy life ahead of you, as they're known to eat native invertebrates such as the weta, and also lizards, birds, and bats. And since their introduction, it's thought that they've caused the extinction of many different bird species. And as rats are notoriously hard to get rid of, it looks like they're going to be a problem for many years to come. But our next species is native to the freshwaters of Eurasia, and it is the common rud. Now this species is often confused with the 
roach, but one of the few ways in which you can tell them apart is that the roach has a bluish tinge to its body and the rudd has an upward facing mouth. And in the freshwaters of Eurasia, this is a pretty unspectacular species. They reach a maximum size of around 45 centimeters and find themselves in the middle of the food chain, being fed on by larger predators such as pike and catfish and feeding on aquatic vegetation and small invertebrates. The rudd was illegally introduced into New Zealand in 1967 as a private consignment of juvenile rudd was snuck into the country where they were reared to adulthood and encouraged to breed. These fish were deliberately and strategically introduced into a number of lakes and ponds for fishing purposes. And as I've covered, New Zealand has a very fragile freshwater ecosystem, mainly full of smaller fish. Nowadays, the rudd is known as the possum of the waterways as they've been able to breed in large numbers, mostly uncontrolled. The rudd mainly feed on native aquatic plants as well as zooplankton. And this destroys habitats and also means that there's less food to go around for the native species. And as the rudd is much larger than most of these species, it is easily able to outcompete them and cause their numbers to decline. And as females can produce 50,000 eggs per kilogram, they really are a hard species to eradicate. But again, our final species can be found pretty much anywhere, as it is the cat. Now, when most people think of invasive species, they think of large wild animals invading from other countries. But one of the worst invasive species in the world could be sat right next to you, as although there are pets, many of them do interact and play a role in the ecosystem. Most owners only see the soft side of their cats, so it's easy to forget that they're also efficient hunters, feeding on many different species of birds and rodents. It's thought that the first domesticated cats arrived in New Zealand on Captain James Cook's ship, the HMS Endeavour, but were established by European settlers a century later. And today there is an estimated 1.4 million domesticated cats in New Zealand, with almost a half of all households owning at least one cat. And New Zealand is home to many different species of flightless bird, such as the kiwi and my favourite animal, the kakapo. These birds have had no need to fly, as there have been no native bird-eating predators on New Zealand for millions of years. And as there's been no predators on the islands for such a long time, they're often fearless and will walk up to humans and cats with no fear at all. And this behaviour is what's led to them being so loved, as they've been described as being more like a dog than a bird. But unfortunately, because of their inability to deal with invasive species and their over-friendly nature, the kakapo is now critically endangered and there are ongoing conservation efforts to help save this species. And I'll leave a link to one of their donation pages in the description below. But controlling a domesticated species such as the cat is very complicated as no one wants to hear that they can't keep their pets anymore or that they have to be kept inside. And as many cats run away from home and become feral, they are even able to reproduce on the streets or in the wild, making it even harder for the native birds of New Zealand. So although they may be your best friend, they can still have disastrous consequences for the ecosystem. But that's about it for this video. Leave your suggestion for the location you want me to cover in the next episode down in the comments below and I'll try and get around to them as soon as I can. But thank you for watching, I hope you enjoyed. If you liked it, please leave a like and subscribe if you want to see more videos like these. But until next time, goodbye.